Now, the Bible does say that what God has joined together, let no man put asunder, that means separate. Now, for Christians, it's best that the marriage is in the church. But even if it is not in the church, it can be in a government office. It's okay too. And it still has the power. Now, if someone says, I don't have money to have a big wedding in the church, it's okay that he just have a simple ceremony with some witnesses. So, that way it becomes, you know, solemnized that this, uh, this uh, uh, matrimony is, is in effect. Now, I, I don't think anyone should be doing this and, oh, I, I gave the, the bride's family some money already and I take her home and then we start to live together. That's the marriage. Yeah. I think all Christians should do the marriage, the wedding ceremony in the church. But I'm not against someone if he says I just do it in a, uh, in a government office. I'm not against him. Yeah. But some people say, this is just a piece of paper. I said, this is not just a paper. It is in effect in the sight of God. The paper just represent, you know, just tell this truth. The important thing is in front of God, we are joined together already. Now, some people, some Christians, I have heard this, even in Hong Kong. They say, well, you know, I'm alone, I'm already not young, and and I have this man for many years already. And then we were together before I was a Christian. So now I became a Christian, does it mean I will separate from him? Now I will counsel her and find out. Now if this marriage doesn't have, you know, serious abuse, sometimes it's, there is a beating and a heavy gambling or adultery, if, or if this person is trying to stop the other person going to church. So if there is, if there is a serious problem, I will advise not to have a marriage and separate. But if the marriage now, even though they've been living together, and this other person is not a Christian, but they have already been together like husband and wife for years, and the other person is not stopping the, per uh, the other person going to church. In that case, I will try to counsel them together and help them to have a, a good marriage and then this person can come to church. But I'm against someone who keep on having sex with someone and not married and then, because they, 
Because they say we've been together for many years already. And, and they have been having sex for years already. And it's hard to say no. Then I will say, what is more important? That you follow God or follow people? Also, sometimes Christians have sex with other people easily. Especially men, they say, I have no responsibility. This woman is willing to have sex with me. I'll just have fun and walk away. But this is against the Bible. And the Bible warns that this person can lose salvation. So if there are some people who are living with another person, without marriage or just having sex without marriage I will always advise action and not to stay in that condition okay. <laughs> okay. and I know that I heard that this is a serious problem and I hope that you will see this as something very serious. That some people say, I go to church, at the same time I have adultery, does it work? According to Galatians chapter 5, these people cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, have I answered your questions? Okay. Yeah, you did, but I think it raised oh, more questions. Yeah. Okay. Come, come forward. He wants to ask a question concerning marriage. Some uh, people might be in the church, two of them, and they are all ministers. And, and they are both ministers? Yeah, yeah. both ministers. Uh -huh. Now they go and fall in love with each other. One gets pregnant. What? One what? That one gets pregnant. Pregnant? Pregnant, yes. Okay. Yeah. Now you as a pastor, are you going to join these uh, two, 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 two brother, the brother and the sister into holy matrimony? Or oh, not? Okay, uh, they, did you say they are ministers? Yeah. Okay. yeah. They are ministers. Okay. But they, they okay. fornicate and one gets pregnant. Okay. In this case, I would first counsel them. To let them know that premarital sex is sin. That, that they have to repent and confess the sins in front of the congregation. To let people know that this is something very serious. <laughs> And also because these people are ministers, for cases like this, generally we will advise these two persons to stop ministering for now. And have counseling so that they really handle the sin before they should serve uh, as a minister. Now whether you know they will have a wedding of marriage it depends on you know the counseling find out that they they uh, are sorry for their sins. And they are both trying to have a you know a godly family marriage. In that case, I will have premarital counseling to help them to be prepared for marriage.
I will not just marry two persons because they have they are pregnant. <laughs> because if they are they are pregnant, one was pregnant. But they keep fighting every day. And they have, and they have some serious problem. Marriage will, will not be advisable until they handle the problem. So we, I don't always advise marriage when they are pregnant. I don't do it because of pregnancy. I also consider where they are suitable to be married. Now one thing is very important. Many people think that when someone is an adult already, 20 years old, or 18 or 16, then he can get married. You know, when some people are not mature, personally and also spiritually, and he has, and he has all kinds of personal problems, He's not suitable to get married. Yes. And also, you know, like people have serious emotional problems, personal problems. Getting married doesn't solve the problems. It makes, it makes the problem much more serious. I use an illustration. Someone is single and very lonely and then they want to get married. They want to get married because they are lonely. That's not the right reason. Because when they, you know, complain every day, worry every day, unhappy every day, <laughs> if they get married, it is disaster. So I believe in the church we should all have teaching about marriage and, yes. you know, how to behave as a person, how to grow how to be mature before the people will consider finding out the, the mate of their life. And I want to say this very seriously. We should not have sex or marriage because of romance. We should not be guided by romance. Because God has a wonderful plan for each person, including marriage or not married. God has a plan that each one can have a good marriage or a good single life. Now, if someone sees someone of opposite sex, oh, they say, I feel very good. My heart pumps every time I see him or her. <laughs> or he likes me to date with him and he is handsome and he says, this quality is <laughs> and I want to say that these <laughs> are wrong reasons. <laughs> to fall in love or to start to date or to get married. 
Now the first thing is we should only date and marry Christians. And also, even if the other person is a Christian, it doesn't mean you can start dating. It must be God's will. It's not necessarily true. Because God has a plan, a specific person for you. Or, or God has planned a single life for you. Pastor, you need to explain more about that. What did you say? Uh, because some people think if someone is single, they have not, they have failed to get married, they are cast. <laughs> That's what some churches teach. First Corinthians chapter seven. But what is it? So come and What is that? First Corinthians chapter seven, first step. Who you sing out there, our God? But what is it? So come and sing out there, our God. Or you sing or you? That's first. The Bible verse says that. The two other guys you are sing on are you tired? Single man and single woman can serve God more wholeheartedly. Bible ye kanti alantu abatali ba fumbo. Basi bolo kuwe zaka no nemiti na jawe jo na. Kasi abatali ba wani na mune na tulabi sokola. And very people. Alantu ba fumbo. They have to care about the things of the world. And Paul said, I, read, I would rather that you would be single and then serve God wholeheartedly. So sometimes some churches could put some worldly guidelines or their personal guidelines into the life of Christians. Now, for instance, another rule I saw in a country I went to. Now, according to the Bible, if the spouse of a person has died, the person is free to marry again, but to marry a Christian. But I know in some countries, when the spouse has died, the woman, the woman cannot get married. Finally, finally, the rule of the country, not the rule in the Bible. So we must discern what the teaching from the Bible. Okay. So, so, so pastor, you are saying in that country only men can marry again, but right. women, women cannot, cannot marry. Yeah, yeah, but like yeah. Yeah. Now, for instance, now one time, a few sisters came to me to Kenya to serve. And the people in Kenya all call them mamas. And I told them, none of them is married. They couldn't understand it. I mean, they, they are women. Why are they not married? And say, women must. Be married. Or maybe they have no terms. Or maybe they have no terms for adult women. The only term is mama. So she must be a mama. Now, let me tell you. In Hong Kong and in many countries, people are free to marry or stay single. Yes. And First Corinthians seven says that to stay single is good too. Okay. So we get it is a Mukama Chakurunga. 
Uh, I have a, a small question. It's, it's not written anywhere. But I've, I just heard of it somewhere. I need to be, I need clarification. We are in a certain theological school. And they taught us. Yes. That it, it is told that Paul had a thorn in his side. He, he prayed for the thorn and to go away, but it never went. So you've talked about uh, 1 Corinthians 17. 7. 7. 7. 7. Where Paul says, if it's possible, well, be like me. That is, when it's given to you, not to marry. Some, in the Southern Theological College, they told them that uh, there are other books that explain that, that, that that Paul was not functioning. Oh, was <laughs> impotent. <laughs> was impotent. <laughs> oh, he has hit the ship. Here in the local language, we say if someone is impotent, you say he was knocked by a ship. <laughs> so some people think it that way. And that's the reason why Paul is yeah, not married. But if you're impotent, it means God okay. has called you to be. There is totally no basis. There is totally no basis for that. <laughs> and I, I want to say this interpretation of Bible, uh, uh, the, the rule, the basic rule. <laughs> Interpret by clear passages. Yes. <laughs> Do not have some concepts in the beginning and then put the concepts into Bible passages. <laughs> if Bible doesn't say it clearly, we cannot develop that as a doctrine. But then we can also arrive from biblical principle to arrive at certain behavior the Bible doesn't talk about. Now, for instance, the Bible doesn't talk about smoking or gambling but we can base on the biblical principles that the Bible doesn't support this. But as to interpret the thought of Paul to say different meaning, they should say this is their conjecture. This is what they think might may be a possibility. Yes. But they should not make it a theory. They should not make it a fact, a doctrine. And this is interpretation that this is the impotency of Paul. This is totally, I mean, this is not only not based on the scripture, but also it's, I think it's ridiculous. It's <laughs> Okay, okay, now we we'll stop here. That is gambling in scripture.